Lord, don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me, no, anyone else but me, no, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me till I come marching home. Well, I just got word from a friend who heard from the guy next door to me. He met a gal that likes to pet and it suits you to a T. So don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me till I come marching home. Well, there we are. We're doing baked apples today, and that's the only song that popped into my head that included apples in the title. So let's get to her. You're going to need two to four large apples. Now, the recipe and the amounts for ingredients I'm giving you today is for two apples. If you want to make four, then just double it. Okay, if you want to make six, triple it. Eight, quadruple it. Yep, you get the picture. Just, uh, if you're not good with math, buy yourself a calculator at the dollar store and you'll be good to go. So, for preparing the apples, you want two things. A paring knife, good knives, buy good quality knives. More people get cut on dull knives and more dull knives tend to be cheap knives. So, buy yourself some good, good quality kitchen knives. The other thing you're going to want is a melon baller. There you go. So you'll find out why in a minute. Actually, I've started this apple already, and I'm just going to take the melon baller and finish scooping out an indentation on the inside. Now, a lot of times with baked apples, you just uh, pour them, and, and that's pretty much it. But I like to make them into a bowl. So how I do that is I take my apple, wash it well, and you want to cut about a half inch off the top. Just like that, a nice slice off the top. Now, we're not going to throw that away. We're going to actually cut that up into little chunks. Because when we core the apple, we're going to create some space. And this is going to help take up the space that the core has vacated. So, let's cut this into little cubes. You can get rid of the stem unless you have some purpose for it. If you're a very gifted crafter like uh, Susan's Creative, you, know, you may have a purpose that you could find for the apple stem, but uh, not being the creative person that she is, I honestly can't think of one other than to use it to fill the garbage can. So we're going to scrape these. I've got a bowl here from the other apple, already cut up into cubes. Now here's where your, your uh, lemon, lemon, your melon baller comes in handy because you don't want to go through the bottom of the apple. Now these pieces you don't want to keep. So what you want to do is you want to take the core out and the melon baller works really well for that to help you get the core out without making a hole through to the bottom of the apple. Like I say, you want to make a bowl. So you have to be very careful. You don't want to go too far down. Basically, I don't know if you can get that. You get down to that point where some, can you see that little green spot there? That's about as deep as you want to go. When you kind of hit that spot, that's when you want to stop. Okay, so set that there for a second. This is going in the garbage. Or if you have a compost heap or a composting program in your town or city, then by all means put it for composting. Unfortunately, here in Regina, we don't, to my knowledge. And then what we're going to do is, like I did with the other apple, we're going to scoop it out into a bowl. I guess I could use a larger end for this, take a little less time. Now we're not going to get rid of this stuff. We're going to use we're going to use it. So here we go. So I have two apples and they are cut into bowls. And we're just going to chop this up into little bits. that done, let's put that into the bowl with the rest of the little bits, and we'll come back to them later. Alrighty, so now we have our two bowls. The next thing I'm going to do, don't need the knife anymore, is I'm going to put just a teeny bit of lemon juice into each one, 
Not a lot, just a little. There we go. And we'll take our marinating brush, if I can find where it's hiding. There it is. And we're just going to kind of brush that lemon juice around on the inside of the apple and on the edge, top edge where you cut it. Why? Well, because it'll keep the apple from browning. It's going to brown in the oven, yes, but while we're getting the rest of the ingredients ready, we don't want our apple to turn brown. So we can set those to the front here. And now you're going to want a small bowl, or big bowl, depending on how many apples you're doing. And into that, we are going to put... Now, this is for, remember, this is for two apples, so if you're going to do four apples, you're going to want to double this. But we're going to put in a quarter cup of brown sugar. Now, I'm using brown sugar Splenda, which, I, as I've said before, is much sweeter than regular brown sugar, so you're not going to want to use as much. So for my recipe, I'm going to use an eighth of a cup because basically that is equivalent to a quarter cup of regular brown sugar. I am using brown sugar slumber. So if it's stuck in there, try to get the lumps out of it, and you're good. And to that, we are going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon. Sorry, a tape. Yeah, a teaspoon of cinnamon, that's right. We are going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg and doo -doo 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 -doo, lost my place here a quarter teaspoon of ginger and just a pinch of cloves and if now if you're making it for four apples it's a half a teaspoon of cloves um, you could I'm sorry not a half a teaspoon an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves or for two just like as I say a pinch now you want to just Mix all those ingredients together well. Like I say, try and break up your brown sugar. You don't want big lumps of brown sugar. Oh, that smells good. Then you can take, you want for two apples, again, this is two apples, two tablespoons of butter. And we're going to cut that into our dry mixture. So you could use a pastry cutter for this, but the small amount I'm doing, a fork works just as well. This is probably the, the hardest part of the whole recipe, <laughs> is getting this all cut into, into itself. Like little, you want to do it till it looks like fine little crumbs. There you go. This is more complicated than baked apples I've had before. Well, yeah, it could be, I guess. But it'll be worth the effort in the, in the long run. So we're getting that all mushed in together there. It's actually, I say it's a little crumbs, but it's actually going to more resemble a kind of paste. So I, 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 still, I was thinking of uh, biscuits and uh, other things where you end up with little crumbs. This is going to look like a little paste. Into that, we are going to add a quarter cup of chopped Cons. Now, if you prefer walnuts, you can use chopped walnuts, but a quarter cup. I guess get these other empty molds out of here. And we'll just mix that into our paste. Alrighty, now this is where you bring back your cut up apples. And you put them into there. You want this to be good throughout, right? So this takes a little bit of work. It's going to seem at first like it's just not, you're not getting anywhere. But just keep at her. A friend of mine sent me a little saying the other day and I, I just loved it. It was a good reminder and it was When I have a particularly bad day, 
and things are not going well, I just remind myself that to this point in my life, my batting average for making it through bad times and rough days is 100%. And that's not too bad. There we go. So if you're having a rough day or if you think this isn't going to get where you want it to be, just remember that saying. If you're alive and watching this, you've made it through probably a lot of rough days and hard times, and here you still are. So cheer up, you'll probably make it through this one too. Alrighty. So there we have our ingredients. We're going to bring back our nice apples. I'll grab a big soup spoon or dessert spoon or whatever you want to call it, and we're going to spoon our filling into our apples. Now, actually, I probably have enough filling here for four apples, but that's okay. Because you want to kind of pack it in there. You don't want it to be too loose, and you don't want it be, to be mushed either, but you... And you're going to put a little extra on the top. Remember, I cut the top off the apple. Well, I'm going to kind of replace it with a fake top. There we go. You're going to say to me, well, that looks just great. Now what do I do with all this leftover filling? Well, several options. One is you can always cut open another apple, but then you're going to have the apple chunks from that apple. So you've got those two. Now, here's what I do. I'm going to just rinse my fingers off here. Just take a small oven-proof bowl. And... it into a little pile in the middle and there we go all right now I have preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit I've taken a 9 by 9 Pyrex dish and I have put a piece of parchment paper in the bottom and we're going to set our apples in there now if I set them just right I can probably sneak my bowl in Oh, nope, I can't, so I'll just set it on the side. But there we have it. We have our two apples ready to be baked in the oven. So, let's put them in, shall we? And we're going to set our timer for 35 minutes. Now, the actual recipe says to bake them for 30 to 40 minutes, um, so it will depend on your oven, but I find in my oven 35 minutes is just the right amount. I had my whisk out and I didn't need it this week. So there you have it, folks, a good recipe for baked apples. We'll let those bake and we'll come back and see what they look like when they're done. So don't go away, even if you're tempted. I know some of you are thinking, oh, I got time to go do this, or I got time to, no, sorry. Because my 35 minutes is just a fraction of a second for you guys, so. All right, we're back. And our 35 minutes is almost up. And like I said to you, it probably just seemed like a fraction of a second, so. I went and actually read for a bit. And uh, rather enjoyed the book I'm reading at the moment. So it uh, wasn't too, hard of, too much of a hardship for me. But let's see how our baked apples are doing, shall we? We're down to 24 seconds. We're going to feel like uh, Cape Canaveral here. We'll have a 10 second countdown as soon as we get there. And we are at 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. We have liftoff. Oh, don't 
those look good. I'll bring the camera over here in a second so you can have a look. I believe we have some good looking baked apples here. Ready for a ride? Here we go. There we go. Look at that. Oops. A couple of nice baked apples and a bowl of baked apple filling. Now a nice dollop of ice cream on those and we'll have a nice tasty dessert. So I hope you've enjoyed today's recipe and give it a try. Um, it's one that we enjoy and you know what? I, I enjoy it so much I think I'm going to have some right now. Let's get out the cold ice cream here. And a nice teaspoon. Spoon out some ice cream. Put it right on there. And look at that. Whoops, forgot the top. Funny how things come out of the oven hot, huh? There we go. Doesn't that look good? Oh, nice and tasty. Try some? Oh, that's right, it won't fit through the UBC port. USB, yeah, whatever that thing's called. Anyway, I hope you'll give today's recipe a try and enjoy it. And until then, take care, stay safe, and God bless.